All right, now I talk a lot about converting your daily driver PC over to Linux, like what the process is and what to expect. But I haven't really touched a lot on revitalizing an old computer with Linux. And I actually think that that's a big advantage of Linux because Linux is so lightweight and so versatile that it can be made to run on ancient computers with like no resources. I'm talking less than a gigabyte of RAM and only a single core processor from over 10 years ago. In fact, there's actually lightweight Linux distros that are made specifically to run on these old computers. And I'm gonna take this video to highlight one, and that is Lubuntu. Now, in case you're unfamiliar, Lubuntu is a derivative of Ubuntu that is designed to be as light as possible on resources. And it does this by shipping with lightweight software. Like for example, it uses the LXQT desktop environment, which in case you're familiar with that, that's a lightweight desktop environment. And also I want to mention that the ISO for Lubuntu is only 1.7 gigs at the time of recording this video. Now for comparison's sake, the Ubuntu ISO is 2.6 gigs at the time of recording this video. So if you only have a two gig flash drive, it'll fit on that. Whereas with Ubuntu, you need at least three or four. And compare that with the Windows ISO, which is like five gigs. So you need like at least a six or eight gigabyte flash drive to flash that to a flash drive. And I'll get into the size after installation later on in this video. But a fresh installation of Lubuntu and any other Linux distro in general tends to be pretty small. I find it's usually around the neighborhood of five gigs. So it'll run pretty well on computers with small drives, which is great for computers made in 2006 when you were doing really well if you had an 80 gigabyte hard drive in your computer. So this distro is great for computers that can't even run Windows 10. So if you have a computer that can't even run Windows 10, you may want to give Lubuntu a try on it. It'll probably run like a dream on it because this distro can run on almost nothing. Like it could be a freaking toaster and Lubuntu would probably load on it. But without further ado, let's get into the actual installation process of Lubuntu and take a look at just how how lightweight Ubuntu is when running in a virtual machine with like the bare minimum resources allocated to it. All right, so now the website is lubuntu.me. And then we just go and click Get Lubuntu, and then it'll bring us straight to the downloads page. And by the way, I'll have this downloads page linked in the description. And then we're gonna scroll down to the LTS release, since I'd suggest staying away from using short-term intermediary releases and only using long-term support versions, since they get more support and they tend to be more stable. But anyway, we're gonna click Desktop 64-bit, and then it'll bring up the download here, as you can see, it's 1.7 gigs, so it'll fit on almost any flash drive, even if it's like two gigs. But anyway, I've already got this file downloaded. I've got it right here in my VMware folder. So I'm gonna go into VMware and create this Lubuntu virtual machine. I've gotta, of course, specify my ISO. Next, I'm gonna use Ubuntu 64-bit since Lubuntu is based on Ubuntu. Next, I'm gonna call this Lubuntu. And now I'm only allocating 20 gigs to this VM. And in terms of hardware, I'm gonna give it half of what I'd usually give VMs. Like I'm only gonna give it a single gigabyte of RAM and only one core. And I'm gonna go change the network connection to bridge and change the USB controller to USB 3.1. There we go. And the reason why I'm allocating so little hardware is to show you how well this distro can run on like almost nothing. But anyway, I'm gonna click finish close and let it do its thing. And now I'll full screen this real quick. We're gonna select English as our language and start Lubuntu. You know what, let's get straight to the install and we can do this in American English. And this is close enough to my city and the US English keyboard layout works fine. And we can go and erase this disk since this is a fresh new virtual machine. If you wanted to dual boot, you'd do manual partitioning. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna do erase disk, then hit next. Next. Then I'm gonna set up my account real quick. I just like to use Drew as my username. Let's give this a uh, better name, Ubuntu PC. And I'm gonna go set up password real quick, then hit next. And then it's just gonna give me a summary of my installation settings. And then we go click install, install now. And then we just let it go through the installation process. And of course I'll speed this up.
And as you could probably see from this clock down there, that installation process was quick. Like it took less than 10 minutes. I wish every single operating system installed this quickly, because if that was the case, that would just make my job as a YouTuber so much easier when I'm working with virtual machines. But anyway, I'm gonna go restart now, and then we can play around with our Lubuntu system and see just how lightweight it is. Let's press enter right here. And this system booted up pretty quickly. That's just how lightweight it is. And we can of course play around with this. Let's just use the default loop onto desktop. And I believe that's suspend, restart, and shut down. But anyway, we'll just log in real quick. And this is what a fresh install of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS looks like. So before we go any further, even before we update, I'm going to pop into a terminal real quick just to get VMware tools installed, just that we have proper scaling. Enter, enter a password. All right, now that that's installed, I'm going to jump out of full screen real quick and then jump back in. And there we go. Now we have our full screen real estate. And now I can go update the system by going into the Muon package manager and clicking check for updates, then do a full upgrade. You know, let's full screen that and then click apply changes. And then we've got to punch in our password and let it do its thing. So now this is one of those updates where we have to reboot the system since there was a kernel upgrade involved, as you can see there. But before we do that, I just want to take a moment to look around the operating system, see the file manager. Like this ships with the most lightweight software possible, and there's your show desktop button right there. And as you can see from looking at the app menu, this comes with all the applications that you'd expect from a standard desktop Linux distro. Like you got terminal, web browser, LibreOffice, and of course Firefox. Now I've went ahead and rebooted the system and opened up HTOP just to show you just how well this system can run on nothing. It only uses about like 3% of the CPU and keep in mind I've only allocated one core to this thing and it's only using 450 megabytes when it's sitting idle without using any swap space. And keep in mind I've only allocated a single gigabyte of RAM to this virtual machine. So when I say that this thing can run on a toaster, there are some toasters that this thing would probably run pretty well on. And if we go into KDE Partition Manager and look at the properties of our partition, you can see that a fresh install is about 6 gigs, which is about average for a Linux distro. Now keep in mind, we already did an update. So when I say that Linux is good for small drives, I mean it's good for small drives. Like I only gave this VM 20 gigs, and I still have 70% of that available for applications and files. And you can, of course, use this on your daily driver system. It doesn't have to be a computer that has, like, no resources. In fact, if you use this on your... In fact, any system you use this on, you will get every ounce of performance out of it. So this is also a good distro if you really want to get every ounce of performance out of your PC. And that was Lightweight Linux in a nutshell. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. And if you do end up running this on an old computer, I encourage you to comment what your experience is like.